When did people start to die? I mean, do, who started to die first? How did it go? Uh, Jim Jones said, um, must do the babies first, take care of the babies first. So at that time, um, we were having nurses and going out, picking up babies out of mother's arms and mothers, some of the mothers themselves were coming up with their babies and they were um, forced to take the, um, the um, potion. Um, the Kool-Aid and cyanide? Yes. And they, where did they take the babies? Into that back area and lay them down on the ground? Um, they took them from, after they injected them and took the poison, they um, took them and they laid them right outside the pavilion, right off into the, um, the garden where they had was planted, where they was planting food and so forth. They laid them right out there. So all the babies were laid out there dead? Yes. What about people who didn't want to die and they saw all this going on? The people that, that didn't want to die, they, a lot of, I would say a lot of people didn't want to die. They were just sitting there, frightened, um, afraid. Um, Jim um, was... Jim Jones? Jim Jones was continually saying, hurry, hurry, we must all do this, we must all die, we must die with dignity, and so forth, and that um, began to come out of his seat and go flowing through the um, audience where the people were sitting and beginning to pull him up out of their seats and lead him on into the um, where the portion was. It's a pleasure to welcome my first guest to this program, actually my, my second guest to this program. The man with the toys was number one. <laughs> this will be number two. He is currently starring in a film called Beverly Hills Cop. Please welcome Eddie Murphy. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. The folks are uh, very excited about you. Why? <laughs> well, they, uh, they, uh, they heard you were going to be here, and they know you, and they love you, and they uh, thought it'd be uh... good. <laughs> you, uh, you, you came in town to do uh, Saturday Night Live uh, uh, over I the live weekend? I right in New Jersey. So. Yeah. <laughs> right over the now, are you, do you, uh, have you lived there all your life? No, I grew up in Roosevelt, Long Island. Yeah. Y'all yeah, didn't grow up in the Roosevelt. Like <laughs> <laughs> and uh, why did you select New Jersey? Because um, I wanted to be close to my mother, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be far from Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got kind of like, it's like, it's not too far away and not too close. Yeah. It's perfect. Now, uh, at some point when you were, when you started out doing comedy, uh, your, your mom was probably thinking, well, I, you know, I guess it's better than him being in trouble with the law. Um, I seen one in one case, um, she struggled pretty hard because she didn't want to die. Um, and how did they kill her? They t injected her in the arm. How quick did she die? Um, the death um, took less than five minutes. How many people struggled like that? I can only say I seen that particular one. I can only say that I've seen that one. Where would they take the bodies after they died? After the bodies um, were injected or sipped in the cup, they would, there would be two people. They would lead them shoulder by shoulder, you know, to um, a clear open other field, and 
it will lay them down face down and let them lay there and die. Did you see a point where they laid people on top of people? No, I didn't see that. Does that surprise you now that you've heard that? Yes, it does. How do you explain that, sir? Yes. Right now, I, I, can't, I can't find a way to explain it. It's just something that I never, I never thought it existed. I never, never wanted to. I never did want to believe it that this was going to take place. In the mid-70s came these comedy clubs, that is to say, places like this one where comedians would come and perfect their craft. The Big Laugh Off, or as it was known originally, the San Francisco International Stand-Up Comedy Competition, is a TV show that can present the comedians as they would present themselves, uncensored and in front of a nightclub audience. It's a showcase and a contest. Bill Farley won it the first year, and second place was pulled down by an unknown street comedian by the name of Robin Williams. In November of 1980, the Big Laugh Off went to the Copacabana in Manhattan. A hundred comics entered the preliminaries. The field was narrowed down to five incredibly hot young comedians. Now, it's hard to pick winners and losers in a bunch like this, but after all, it is a competition. So the judges gritted their teeth, closed their eyes, and made their choices. And now, to prove that judges' taste can sometimes be as funny as the comedians act, here's the guy that came in dead last that night, Eddie Murphy. I am from Roosevelt, Long Island. I grew up in an all-black neighborhood. I did. Did you grow up in an all-black neighborhood? Being a black stand-up comic is an asset. There's a lot of things I can do on stage that a white comic couldn't do, and I get away with it. I have been the class clown since I was a little kid. I started out as a class clown, and from the class clown, I went to the school clown. From the school clown, I went to the neighborhood clown, and like now, everybody knows me. I'm the guy who pranks I'm, I'm Funny Murph. Put your pants up. That's number one. I don't want any of this, right? Also, if don't I was like faced with choosing another career, I, I think I'd go crazy. There's nothing else I could do. I decided a very young, I'm 19 now, I decided when I was 17 that I wanted to go into this for real. And I was familiar with stand-up comedy and entertainment since I was 15. A lot of kids tell their parents they want to be doctors and lawyers and garbage like that, but I want to be a stand-up comedian. I told my parents that, and everything's working out for me fine. I'm growing constantly on stage, and everything is working out for me. Uh, I like very much the imitations you did. The impressions were great. I want to get, I say, famous by the time I'm 21. I'm 19 now. I give myself two years. One day, Monday night audition night, this young fella comes in. 17 years old. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're kind of loose around here, and we're a happy family, but I was not really ready for Eddie Murphy, because he walks in and says, well, I'm here, and the show can start. It was just something that, after I seen that it was coming through, that it was going through, um, only thing I was trying to do was trying to figure a way out of it. 